thank you so much team for joining the session so today i just want to give some introduction to the kamunda bpmn tool so bpmn is um, one of the process engine uh, to pro uh, to run any business processes um, so i just want to know like uh, some of your experiences uh, if you have ever heard about bpmn or already using in your project so that i can mold my presentation accordingly so initially i thought i would give some best practices by running some some of the um, process definition uh, but later i decided okay it's not much aware of audience so i just want to know from your end like what is your opinion and whether you have used in your project so that um, i can change the direction Yeah, anyone can unmute themselves and uh, speak out. Hi, Anna. Like uh, we are using a similar kind of tool, not uh, Kamunda BPM. We are using IBM BPM. I think which is kind of a same. It's like a kind of competitor for Kamunda, but we have been using IBM BPM and IBM integration bus in our projects. Oh, excellent. And any, any others? okay so only one of them is using so i mean uh, probably i would try to cover most of the basic uh, stuff uh, in this session if we need a more details uh, session we'll have another one so definitely we are planning to have weekly ones or like maybe once in two weeks right so yeah we yeah. uh, continue with this um, so what was his name uh, actually i could say sai kiran sai kiran mallu yeah hey sai um yes you are right so the ibm is also competitor uh, for the kamunda but uh, the only difference is kamunda is open source and ibm is proprietary so we have to pay for them for any subscription or licenses but kamunda is open source open source and it has a very big community community so most of the companies um, who are um, implementing business process and open source are using kamunda okay so just let's go a uh, little bit introduction about uh, bpmn and what is it and then what are the different uh, components in it initially and then uh, some mm, what are the basic activities uh, in kamunda and then we'll learn about how to uh, install kamunda and then kamunda components and the architecture of the kamunda component and then uh, we'll talk about some of the tasks in kamunda i'll try to show some examples for today's session so this would be the agenda you can pause me in the middle of, uh, of the session wherever you want so that i can clarify any of your question or we can discuss at the end of the session okay so let's understand what is bpmn so B bpmn is one of the process uh, engine tool uh, it's initially developed uh, by open community to come up with a standard flow chart for depicting any of the business uh, complex flows so any organization will have some complex flows where we can uh, orchestrate them uh, programmatical way as well but it is very hard to understand the process so then people came up with a plan of defining it in a flow chart format so which is uh, called as a, a business process management notation okay and uh, <clears throat> it has some uh, standard elements provided by the standard community and all the tools which are is implementing bpmn one of them is kamunda uh, will uh, also follow the same yeah, elements and symbols to depict that flow chart so that everybody can understand so as we know that every organization will have so many um, different uh, you know, teams or uh, we can say departments right so uh everybody should be able to understand the process and then uh, make the changes accordingly if required or update the changes existing uh process 
so this methodology was developed um, by the business process management initiative initially and it used to called as business process modeling notation initially and then recently in 2011 we got the bpm and version 2.0 with all the latest updates uh, and it is being called as a business process model and notation so that is bpm and why we need to be use bpm we already discussed um <clears throat> So BPMN provides an intuitive and an easy way for non-expert users. So as we know, most of the users in the organization would be developers or like uh, maybe technical knowledge people, but some of them would be business knowledge people. It's very hard for them to understand the flow. So we used to create our own process diagrams either using Visio or like maybe presentation to make them understand. And if they have to make the changes, they have to come back to the developers or the technical team to make the necessary changes so it is really hard to make them understand and make the changes to the uh, business flow so instead the business team can themselves make these changes to the flow and uh, run the process accordingly and it just represents the semantics of complex process so easily and uh, it reduces the noise communication between the process defense stage and implementation, execution and management. So it is, I mean, when we implement the uh, same flow in a programmatical way, there could be so many challenges uh, based on the implementation of the flow. So we might have, have implemented in so many different languages. It could be in Java, it could be .NET, it could be JavaScript. So whoever is uh, working on that, um, flow should be aware of the technology in which it has been implemented to understand that flow. But uh, BPMN just follows the standard template of defining the activity in a um, standard uh, elements format so everybody can understand. So the communication between the activities or the elements would be uh, understandable by each and every person easily. And these are the BPM and 2.0 elements. The main elements are like flows, which includes events, activities, gateways, and connections. To connect these events, we need some connections like a sequence flow or a message flow and association. So how these are connected can be shown using connections. And swim lanes. So swim lanes is like a pool, like our group of a um, elements which belongs to a particular department or an entity. Artifacts. So artifacts is like a data objects or groups or annotation. If you want to define a set of elements as part of a group inside uh, a department, then we'll go with artifacts. Or if you want to depict any document which is um, which you want to represent in the uh, flow diagram or process definition diagram, then we'll use this artifact. So we'll go over uh, the examples and then I'll show you the Kamunda uh, installation and then we can see all this in detail. So first let's talk about this uh, basic uh, elements in BPM 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, in the flows, we have an event. So event is, uh, event represents a start or stop or intermediate event of the business process definition. So every, um, we can call it as workflow, okay, or a process definition, okay. So it will have a set of elements as we discussed. So to start with any of the workflow, we need to start with a notation or a symbol, which are represented here in a circle format. And if you want to end the workflow, so you use a um, dark circle here, which represents an end. So that means the definition is done. The process is completed successfully or failed, whatever it could be, but it is ended. And during the intermediate status, um, we have uh, multiple things, right? Let's say uh, some of the task is taking longer time, maybe one hour, 
some hours or maybe days also so in that case we can represent the intermediate uh, activity uh, with that and it could be a message event i can show you multiple of them uh, so this is the commander workflow uh, so commander modeler which i already downloaded and i'm showing here but i'll show you the steps to download and install how to install in your machine so there are uh, different So there are different events here. If you see, like event could be, internet event could be a message event where it is waiting for a message and a timer event where it waits for the time to occur. Let's say waiting for an hour or two hours or conditional event, start event. So it, it waits for that condition to occur and then starts here. And the signal start event, like it waits for a signal and then starts. So similarly, there are, uh, so these are the different intermediate events. And the next thing is activities. So activity is the actual task which is performed. So if you want to represent any uh, work being done by a task, is represented in this rectangular box format. So either it could be a manual task or it could be a service task or it could be an MSS task, any task which is done. So there are multiple tasks uh, available. We can discuss about those in detail later. Uh, but so far, you know, the task will be represented in this rectangular box format. I'll show you more, maybe. So if you see here, there is a send task, so which is trying to send an email and receive a task, waiting for a message, and the user task, uh, waiting for the user to take action on this task, either it could be a simple approval process. And uh, manual task, in some of the process, there could be some manual intervention steps where a uh, user has to go manually and uh, fix that issue or like make that process to continue and then update it accordingly. And similarly, we have a service task where a uh, service can be invoked. It could be a simple RESTful API service call. And a script task where we can write some scripts. Here like uh, Kamunda supports multiple scripting languages. Um, we can we can use JavaScript as a basic scripting language, and we can write the JavaScript as well. And it also supports Groovy. And that's about task. And then next one would be the sub process. So if we have a very complex flow, we can um, divide into sub process so that we can easily understand. And if we have uh, um, anything which uh, which can be moved into one process definition file into other definition file, we can still do that. We can call it as a sub workflow, and then that will be included as a sub process. Okay. So there are two uh, rectangular boxes here. One is sub process, and then call activity. So sub process is a process. Uh, the process is running within the same process definition, but it is running on a separate thread. Okay. Where call activity is a um, <coughs> sub process which is running on outside the process definition, it's another process definition completely, which is running on a different thread. So that's the only difference, but uh, both of them depict the same thing like sub process. So far, we are good. Any questions? Um, Shankar, Hello? I have one query. I mean, I, 
Ya, yeah, yeah. um, actually, like I joined a little bit late, like uh, Camunda and BPM and uh, what exactly is this? Uh, what exactly is the BPM? So BPM is a, just a standard provided by provided by the community uh, platform. Like how we need to depict what elements it can contain. Okay. And uh, I'm still talking about BPM only. What are the different elements available in BPM? Okay. Kamunda is one of the implementation of the BPM. Okay. It's an open source uh, BPM platform. But we have uh, so many uh, implementations for the BPM. Hi, Shankar. I have a very quick question here. So can you please just elaborate the difference between BPM and then ERP software? So how BPM is different from ERP first thing and if at all it is uh, different. So how like, you know, how this uh, BPM can be used in ERP to enhance something in ERP. So I just have that uh, question here. Okay, because uh, you're saying that as for uh, uh, like, uh, like, uh, Till now, what I have heard with respect to BPM, so what I've understood is it is something like uh, implementation, configuration, and then uh, some programmings will invoke some programmings using some events, something like that, right? So the similar kind of things that we'll do in ERP also. I just wanted to know the, you know, the slight difference between these two. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, um... sorry. Um, so ERP is one of the tool, right? Like um, for the enterprise applications, okay? Uh, that I'm not sure internally it might be using some BPM and tool to control the process, right? Let's say we take um, SAP, okay? As one of the ERP tool, right? So it has uh, so many implementations um, to control any of the business process. So they might be internally using BPM and I don't know, uh, but it is just a, a defining a process to control uh, your organization specific or department specific uh, complex process okay and erp uh, is like standard module given by one third party vendor or like maybe a, a, mm, or a vendor who has already built a common solution for the different organizations right so let's say accounting or like maybe uh, Firing a tax or like maybe generating a tax is common across all the industries, right? So, so they have created one ERP solution for that and uh, selling it to the customer. Okay, it just follows the same standard. Okay, but a BPM is something like where you can control by yourself, which is non-standard process. I mean, which is very specific, unique to your organization. Let's say um, uh, maybe process approval flow, right? Uh, we'll take very simple example, like any software which I need to buy in my organization has some standard uh, level of approval, okay, to get the license for the software, okay? And each company would have its own uh, specific, um, specific, um, level of uh, approval, okay. In my case, in our organization, if I want a license of any software, I need to raise a request in one portal. Maybe it's a service now for now, but it could be something else in future, right? So for a different organization. And after that, it goes to my manager and my manager has to approve and then it goes to business analyst to judge why we need the software. And then it goes to the um, you know, architecture team to evaluate whether that is really needed or not and then certifies that. And then it goes to the um, sales department uh, where they will uh, identify whether that license is already available in, that or in our organization or not. And then um, try to get the license for us and uh, process will end. So this is a flow in our organization, right? So in this case, in this flow, complete flow, there are so many people interaction and so many manual tasks here, and so many tools can be used to complete this 
end to end process okay and i assume this is not the same step which is being followed in all the organization to just software approval right let's say mine is a very small company startup company right so if it is just a startup we simply buy with our credit card and then go to our manager and just tell him that hey i got this license can you pay me back right so this is a non standard process so in the erp uh, the only difference i see here is like the erp provides a standard uh, process flow and internally it might be using bpm which i am not aware of it. i will let you know in detail did i clarify your question or still any more this is no 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 that's wonderful great great thanks yeah now i got exactly what exactly where it lies yeah yeah thanks okay thank you and uh, so earlier uh, vinay was asking about the bpm and tool right so this is i mean i just opened wikipedia here so these are the different implementations of bpm and tool dot o engine okay as we already discussed about uh, the 2.0 is one of the version where they have made some updates to the standard practices of the bpm bpm and implementation so all of these products are following this 2.0 standard okay so <clears throat> active vos and activity and one of them is kamunda ie okay and it's an open source workflow as we discussed and similarly jbpm is a ibm platform so jbpm or yeah did you call me up no Uh, I was just saying. Yeah, I was just saying. Uh, that is Vinay, right? Yeah, Vinay. He, we're just recalling your question and then coming back to the question. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And one update, like, uh, did any, uh, every one of you know that like uh, Plural Site is offering free April month to build up the skills. yeah yeah it's okay yeah, please. some some of them in coursera and then uh, i do no no uh, even plural uh, uh, i have like i have sent across to my friends and everywhere but i don't have the correct channel to uh, send to our techira team so i'm just uh, speaking out i i'm just only the part of the tr uh, like uh, some and members like venki's group uh, he is our coordinator Yeah. Okay, I am chatting with you. I'll share my number. Okay, I'll send personally. So just share with me. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, Plural Site is offering uh, for free April months uh, training for uh, because uh, it costs around three hundred dollars per um, year, and we are we'll get chance to look into different technologies which are latest and greatest. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. and out of these like uh, we we'll just come back to the kamunda again so so out of these bpm and tools so we are just focusing on kamunda bpm and tool alone today and it is built on java framework it follows some bpm and tool that was standard and it is apache software license so uh, let's go to the so we are done uh, in the activity side so now the gateway so gateway is uh, to interconnect the task uh, based on some uh, conditions so there are so many gateways available in bpm and so out of which is like exclusive event based parallel inclusive exclusive event based and all of this so if you have any if you want to represent any condition and based on that you want to redirect the flow to different path so we will use this gateway connections so connections are used to depict 
the connection between uh, the task or the mm, events we can say so there are three ways to represent it one is the sequence flow which will represent the sequence of execution of the process and the next one is message flow so the when we send a message might be waiting for the response from the message or like it might take some time to complete this message so we should we represent in dotted line format with the arrow mode and then the third one is just association where it could be useful just to depict um, uh, by providing any artifacts or like maybe the comments which you want to provide inside the uh, process definition file i mean the workflow itself will be defined using all this so we can see them here So this is just a dotted line here where I can just explain about startup. And we are already seeing here the standard line, and which will just display the general flow of execution of the workflow. And then if you want to make this flow as a default flow, we will just write this default. And then by default, it will, it's like a else condition in general programming language, if else condition. And here is the example for conditional uh, event. So where we are checking for a condition, whether it is a holiday or not holiday, and do some work based on that. And next thing is swim lanes. So in the swim lanes, as we already discussed, an organization could have um, multiple departments. Right? So each one we will, dip, uh, let's say I'm part of like sales, or like maybe legal team. I might want to change my own uh, implementation logic or like update the existing legal process based on the new standards. And I would like to focus on my legal swim lane rather than focusing on all other, looking at all other um, departments and then trying to understand this. So if we don't uh, define the swim lane, I mean, still the process definition file will still work and then the whole process might work completely. But it's just that the representation of the workflow in a better format so that any um, department specific uh, changes. If any department changes uh, need to be done, we can simply go to that swim lane and simply update that flow alone. So as I said, if I'm part of legal, I will just focus on this my swim lane, legal swim lane, and then make the changes to the flow accordingly. And I don't need to worry about all of that. But let's say, let's assume we don't have this swim lane and we have completely uh, represented this complete flow with this, uh, all these uh, uh, events and then tasks, then uh, I need to go through each and every step, understand where I need to make the changes and then make the change accordingly in my uh, flow, the legal flow. And the last one would be the artifacts. So artifacts are just to represent uh, your BPM and diagram you know, with a different um, icon like uh, the first one would be a document icon where you want to specify uh, if you are retrieving any data from a document or something uh, like that then you can mention this document icon so yeah. so this is the document icon and then a rounded edge a uh, rectangle with a dotted border shows the activities from a group to form a group. If you want to represent a group of activities in a form of a group, we use this uh, 3D, so here it is. And then we can group all the activities which are belongs to this group and we can represent them as one group so that we know like all these activities belongs to this group. And uh, uh, should be okay. 
So till then we just discussed about some of the basic elements of the BPMN. Now we'll just go into uh, Kamunda in detail. I mean, definitely I'll be covering only on a high level of the Kamunda uh, BPMN engine in this session, like the architecture and then how it is being built and how we can install, download, install, and how do we deploy in the organization. So this is a homepage of the Kamunda. Kamunda.com. So you can go here and there's a bunch of material already here and so many um, solutions, best practices uh, are already provided. You can go through this website to get all the information about Kamunda. And next thing would be um, a little bit introduction about Kamunda. So I don't want to create any duplicate uh, information by creating a presentation. Even when you are saying like, we don't want to um, do that. We just want to share the knowledge. So here I'm just trying to share the knowledge, whatever I have, even I'm, I just started working on BBMN last year itself as part of my, um, one of the tool which we are developing in our organization. So, So I just, I'm just, a, um, I just captured all the links from where I have learned. Most of them are from the Kamunda website itself, but we do, I don't create another resource for the um, developers or engineers to go through again and understand this and compare both of them. Instead, it would be better to go through one single source of documentation where everybody can learn. So that is Kamunda itself because that they have built and developed, they know more than us. So it's better to go to this website and then learn about this tool. So, so this is the um, basic component involved in this uh, Kamunda workflow. So it has a modeler, uh, a business analyst or a developer can use this modeler. And then uh, this is called model phase. And then this is called execution phase. In the execution phase, we have uh, multiple components involved in this. So as we discussed, uh, the end user can interact with the task. If the task can be invoked either by a UI or it could be invoked by a REST API. We'll discuss about that in detail. Uh, the architecture of the BP uh, Kamunda. And then uh, we can build any custom application on top of that to avail this task or claim this task and then uh, invoke the BPM engine to act accordingly. And then there's another um, box here is cockpit. Uh, the cockpit is uh, provides all the, I mean, it's a simple dashboard to the user, how many process definition has been deployed and what is the status of those. And if there's any issue with any of the uh, process flow, we can go to the cockpit and then uh, look at different tasks there, and check if there is any exceptions in there. And then administration is another um, another representation for the administrator. Uh, in this task, like an admin can go in there and then create some um, user group or like um, um, you can give some permissions who can do what. And we can control the task as well. Uh, which group of uh, members can avail this task, claim this task, perform this task, okay. So he can go and create, uh, I can show you in, uh, how it looks like um, by running the Kamunda in the local. And uh, all the interactions, whatever we do on this task, will get stored in the database. So Kamunda out of the box supports multiple databases, you can just configure the database, either MySQL, Postgres, or like you know, RKIL, and then all the data will get stored in the database so that whenever you uh, continue working on the um, process flow, and the data can be fetched from the database and then uh, go to the next task accordingly. 
And these are some details about the process engine infrastructure. And um, and as we already discussed about modeler, so this is a modeler which I downloaded, where we can just model the process flow by using this modeler. And the engine itself, which runs this uh, Kamunda, is called Kamunda Process Engine, where we can uh, download by using um, this website kamunda.com. I'll show you that link in the below step. So. So here is the link uh, where we can download the commander. Uh, you can download for different platforms. It's a platform agnostic, and you can download for Linux, uh, Windows, uh, like Mac operating system, and then install any machine. I can show you the simplest way, which uh, I love it by using Docker. Uh, once this is done. The modeler and the web application. Um, so it uses Kamunda already uses in web application. The one of the best implementation of the Kamunda is REST API implementation. So any task you want to avail or any um, event you want to see in the Kamunda can be activated using REST API. Or even you can start the workflow using uh, REST API. So you can just Install the Kamunda and then invoke the REST API instead of using the Kamunda of engine itself to start the workflow and then avail the task by using Kamunda cockpit. You can just create your own application by any of your framework, either it could be Angular, REST, um, React, or any other uh, framework which you, which you want to implement. And then uh, internally, you we can make a REST API call to uh, make the task complete or like maybe act on the task which you are working on the process definition file. And we talked about the task list, cockpit, and then admin. Let's go to the next. So the architecture of the Kamunda. So for any question, hope we are good. So let's I think we are running out of time. Let me quickly go through this process in an architecture as well. So as we <clears throat> as we discussed, like uh, there is two main parts in Kamunda, right? One is the process engine, and the second one is the modeler. Uh, so this is the modeler which we already see uh, in the green square box here, where we can uh, model the um, flow of the process, and to execute or to run that process, we use this process engine. So in, internally, the process engine has a, a public API to communicate with the process engine itself. That is a REST API, which we can interact with the uh, any task. And then job executor will run the executor in, in the background to make sure like um, the job is running properly. Or like if it is failed, it will update the um, update us accordingly. What was the reason and everything? So the BBM and 2.0 core engine will uh, understand each and every element of what we define. So whenever we model this uh, flow using this uh, depicted format, internally it generates an XML. If you see here, there are two tabs in the bottom. One is diagram and XML. We click on XML. Behind the scene, it is generating this big XML based on the flow, whatever we are defining. So Whenever we deploy this flow in the process engine, it's not going to understand this flow with the tag, how we are depicting. Instead, it is interpreting this XML and then understanding each flow, how it is being defined in the process. So definitely, it needs some engine to understand that. That is the BPM 2.0 core engine, which understands that XML and then uh, converts into a process and runs that process. And there is a ORF framework to interact with the database. That is my bad. Is. And uh, hopefully, you might have aware of uh, Hibernate is a framework, right? One of the popular ORM framework way to interact with the database. Similarly, my bad is another ORM framework uh, to persist any data in the database. And 
uses the database driver to connect to the database and store all the data, whatever is being processed as part of that job execute or the process. And there are different ways to deploy this uh, process engine. Um, one is embedded process engine. You can have your own application, let's say like maybe my ERP application, as earlier we discussed, right? ERP could be using process engine inside it, but we don't know. So if you want to uh, deploy the process engine as part of the ERP itself, you build the process, uh, process engine jar file as part of your Java application, ERP application and deploy it so that internally it can use it. And second way is container manage process. You can deploy it as a container. I mean, if you are aware of uh, Docker and containerization of uh, um, any, application or a tag you will you will be familiar with the container and i'm sure like most of you are aware of container if not you can simply go to google and search about containerization so you will know about that um so it's a more matured i mean i can say in single sentence like it's more matured way to run the application uh, than in a virtual machine so container has its own, uh, you can say it's individual virtual mission. And uh, next one would be the standalone remote process engine. So we can deploy in process engine in one remote server and uh, you can deploy your all, our, all your application. Let's say you have multiple applications, application one, two, three, and all three of these applications want to use this process engine server to process it. Then we can simply deploy it in a remote location and then access it with this by calling the REST API of the process engine server. And the cluster model is the same as this, but um, we can deploy it in multiple uh, locations and cluster, cluster it in a clustered environment. And we can create a shared database because we want to share the data across this clustered environment. And it's a multi tenancy model is also available, uh, but it's up to you which will best suit for your needs and then go with this architecture. I don't want to go in detail and then explain this. It's about uh, how you want to deploy in your environment. I don't think we need to worry about much of this. Like uh, it would have been already been decided by our organization or like some of the group um, architecture team. Okay. And uh, the web application architecture internally it uses all this uh, framework. As we know, it provides a REST, nice REST API uh, to communicate with the process engine. So that is being done by using JAX or a standard. And uh, we have a UI developed on top of Angular JS, required JS jQuery, and Bootstrap. All these UI components. And additional frameworks is like Commander Beacon in uh, JS and Angular Data Depend Toolkit for implementing complex um, <clears throat> complex data handling inside the Commander. So we don't need to watch, worry much about this. We, but we need to understand about the architecture. Then only we can plan well and then deploy well so that we can use all the benefits of the Commander. If we Mm, want to use comment. Okay. So next we will go to the basic step how to download and install the Docker and uh, Commanda as well. So the first thing is you need to download a Docker. I am just following one of the process here like um, to deploy the Kamunda in a container format as we just saw in the architecture. But you can also download the Kamunda engine directly and then run, it, run as part of your application, Java application. Mm. So I just downloaded a Docker. If you want to download a Docker, you can just um, simply Google and then download the Docker engine. Okay. 
we can download for Mac or Windows or Linux. And once you download and install, uh, so you can see the icon uh, that the Docker is running here. So that means we can deploy any of our, our Docker images here so that it can run as a container. And <clears throat> now we want to run our doc Kamunda image in the, in the Docker. So we can I shall provide another link here. So any of the image, if you want to download um, from the Docker Hub repository, you can search for that in the Google or you can go to hub.docker.com then search here and you should be able to see a Docker pull comment here. Okay. And you can simply copy this and go to the terminal. So once you download and install the Docker, in the terminal you can simply type Docker so that you can see whether the Docker is installed installed properly or not. Okay. Once it is successfully installed, you will see this Docker being uh, running here with some of the verbos here, or you can type Docker help to use this um, command line command line argument. How you want to interact with the Docker. So basically, the basic command in the Docker is like to pull an image. So if you see here, uh, Docker pull, pull an image or a repository from a registry. So as we as we just saw, like Kamunda, um, if you want to download the Kamunda uh, image, so they have already provided the full command here. Either we can copy this one, or you can directly manually type it. So the best way is to copy and then run it here. Okay. So, so as I already have this image, it is not showing the downloaded steps. Uh, but if you don't have an image, it will show some steps, downloading steps, how it is being downloaded. And there are different layers in the image when we construct the Docker image. So it will try to download each image. So I'm not going to go in detail about that Docker image, but I have already got this image. Now to run this image, uh, we can just use Docker run command. Uh, but I, we have already those steps provided here by Kamunda. So these are the three, uh, two steps. So first step is already done. We just pull that image. We haven't uh, started that image. So once we use Docker run command, it will spin up that image and create a container and one of the port uh, where we can um, access the Kamunda um, application is 8080. So once we run this command, we can see that application is running. But I already did that as it take some time, two to three minutes. So I already started in the other window here. So I'm just tailing the log here, uh, but you would just use that command to start the uh, image. Then we can directly access the command engine in the port 8080. We don't need to type uh, all this, but still you can, you can simply use localhost 8080. And by default, it comes with the def default authentication uh, with the user as demo and demo. So you can type demo demo to log into this cockpit. So earlier we discussed about a cockpit and then admin, right? So I will show those two here. Um, so this is the cockpit view of Kamunda, where we can see how many process instances are running. Here we see eight instances are running and how many incidents are read. Incidents are like an exception or like maybe 
any error in your workflow will be shown here okay so that we can take the action on that and open human task so we know that a task can be a human task as well right or like user task where user has to take an action until user doesn't take an action it doesn't continue so uh, it will show all the human tasks here how many are pending similarly uh, we can deploy the multiple um, workflows or process definition for different flows in kamunda so we we can see that there are two here we click on this we can see all the two flows which were deployed here so one is invoice visit and the second one is a review invoice once you download and install these two are the default uh, process definition which comes with this kamunda itself and if you want to deploy another one you can create your own uh, workflow with the kamunda model and then deploy okay so this is about cockpit and let's look at this running instances and we can go inside this process definition and see um, the incident specific to this uh, process definition so here it has created three instances first instances these are the incidents and uh, how, how many of them called and then you can see like where it is being uh, the correct execution of the process and definition here and also we can go to the task list here to see the task inside the process definition so as we know like um, each user might be responsible to avail the task claim the task so based on his role and then permission so if i am authorized to avail this task i can go i mean it will show a claim button here to claim this task we have the task which is open to me looks like all of these are already assigned and then claimed so you can simply complete this task by we want to approve this so we are everything is done invoice generation everything is done we are just approving at the final stage okay i assume that i am the approver so i go in here and then select the task and then select this uh, approve button and then complete this task so that that flow will be done the whole process will be done Okay. Similarly, we can have our own uh, task defined uh, in the intermediate stages of this workflow, and then um, each user could be responsible to do, uh, either to approve or action on top of the task. And they can come back here in the my task list and then uh, complete their task so that it goes to the next step. And the next one would be the admin page. So in the admin page, as we discussed, we can define uh, the groups, users, and then authorization. Who can do what? So you can create a set of groups and then set up users and assign some permissions to the group so that those users who belong to that group can avail those tasks. So it's just uh, standard authorization mm, we follow in any of the application. So that's pretty much about download and installation of the Kamunda. We are past one minute, but I will just quickly go through um, tasks in Kamunda just to explain about the task, and then we can take up some questions. So we already discussed uh, like some of the tasks earlier. Right? The basic tasks in Kamunda are service tasks, send tasks, user tasks. Business rule task, script task, receive task, manual task. All these are different tasks. So we can see them here as we just saw here. Like this is the script task. 
where we can uh, write some script here to execute as part of this task. So you can mention inline script or external script and provide that uh, file name. So it uses multiple languages. Commander support. supports multiple languages. Either you can have a Java delegate, or uh, like um, you can write a Java program and then deploy it as part of a jar to the Kamunda and then uh, call the class. Or you can um, it also supports interpreted language like a JavaScript and then Groovy. You can type your JavaScript language directly here, or you can provide some Java, JavaScript file name which you deploy as part of this Kamunda. So as we don't have much time now, this time I'm not going in detail, but next time I will definitely uh, show you one use case, how to create step-by-step -step and then deploy it. So in our organization, we are following JavaScript uh, as a language to work on um, any of the tasks or like to work on this uh, uh, Kamunda workflow process engine. So whenever, whenever we want to make any API call, uh, get the response or process the response, we use JavaScript as a language and then um, write our business logic inside this workflow. So here is a simple example, which will uh, which is depicting us like uh, what to be done if it is a holiday and then what now, what to be done if it is a non-holiday. So, so check if the date is a holiday. So, I mean, if we have any decision table, we can, I mean, Kamunda also supports a decision table where you can have statically defined some conditions using decision table and uh, identify uh, whether it's holiday or not holiday or make an external API call uh, by calling external service. So external service could be uh, HTTP REST API service or it could be a SOAP service or a message service. So here the example is a REST API service. Kamunda out of the box provides a HTTP connector. So there are so many connector ideas um, that Kamunda supports. You can go to Kamunda documentation search for those. The basic uh, um, connector, standard connector is HTTP connector. So as we, most of us are using REST APIs as a standard these days. So HTTP connector, you know, requires some input parameters. One is the URL which, to which we are uh, making a call to get the response. And then the method, whether it is uh, HTTP, which method we are trying to invoke and get put post on a patch and the headers, what we want to send it to the REST API. And once this task is completed, uh, we want to read the response and then process accordingly. So to read the response, either we can use again external resource or internal script. Uh, internal script is just, uh, you can write in inline script here itself and check for the response of this task and then um, act on top of it. So maybe I'll go in detail about that later when I show you the example. But here, all we are trying to understand here is like, uh, we check for a, uh, whether today is, uh, in the date is holiday or not. And we are just uh, checking for a condition, whether it is a holiday. If it is a holiday, uh, pack for holiday, and maybe go to a trip, whatever it is you want to do. And then this is a um, circle, the dark circle which we represent to end the workflow. And similarly, if it is a non-holiday, we will go to um, work, obviously, and then do whatever you want to do at work. So that's why it is a manual task. So you you do. Uh, it's an implementation of you being what to be done as part of the task. Okay. And then end of the work. I hope um, this session has given some basic understanding about the workflow. I thought I would cover more, but uh, it's already one hour time. So definitely we'll yeah. have another session and then we'll continue on top of this, where I can show you how to create a complete flow. In this I took it example already, which I created yesterday, but we can create end to end with that session and then deploy it and see how each task is running in the process engine and then how to debug it and see how to claim each and every task we can see. Okay, I think, yeah, since we already don't know time, but 
yes if audience are interested i mean they if they have any questions we can take it i'm um, definitely yes we will we'll schedule another one with uh, as a follow follow like as i said process business process use case right yeah so that will be useful so if anyone have any questions on this or probably you can give feedback as well how it is how it is going you can plan more sessions technical sessions or, or follow-up session for this or if you are interested in any um, other topic as well so um, i thought like uh, any other maybe language or like a tool uh, language would be easier to learn right we can go to any plural site or any website where there are so many documentation provided already in uh, internet and youtube so we can learn it there but these tools like and there are um, certain best practices to be followed only the engineers who really worked on it and then uh, face some challenges they can explain better so as i learned uh, whatever i have learned so far from past one year i wanted to demonstrate to you that's why i picked this topic uh, where i can show uh, explain some best practices which we are following uh, but if you prefer to pick any other topic i'm um, happy to um, explain that to and i have knowledge on java spring um, node js javascript uh, and most of the tools like uh, docker kubernetes open shift containerization whatever um, you feel comfortable you just post it to post it in the group or check with pinky and then uh, if i know definitely i would be able to take that session or if any of uh, our Mm, take it at group members as a knowledge of the tool or language they should be able to give the session so that we can get benefit yeah i'm going to probably um ask in the group what what they need but not now but a little later based on that i will plan the technical sessions okay so at the moment anyone have any questions seems quite so yeah probably I, in the session uh, sorry you can give the feedback at least okay i mean what yeah. do they think like do they really want to continue it or not uh, so that we can plan accordingly right yeah the follow up session yes hello ving uh, vingi i'm sri kant yes sri kant yeah presently i am working on automation right can i move to this platform so this is uh, one of the um, it's not a so what we can say is like it's one of the tool which we can be used to the automation right so i, I would like to understand what you are doing currently maybe um, presently i am one on one so that we can discuss about that okay okay, okay. okay. yeah so mm -hmm. i am using this tool as part of automation itself okay so i work okay. on cisco so we build um, we automate the cisco switches and the cisco servers by using this tool okay. Where, like, uh, okay. cisco switch can be configured and then upgraded to a new version by upgrading the software or like uh, Uh, interface is configured or anything whatever we operate uh, uh, work on top of the cisco switch we automate using this tool. okay okay so will devops uh, will be a part of it devops no no devops is completely different this is not part of devops tool. okay okay thanks no problem okay if no one have any question i have it probably um, since i'm not into this process languages and everything but one question which is top in my head is what is the difference between this business of bpm and process and rpa 
is there a major difference or part of or clubbing in between yeah robotic process automation i think yeah so robotic process automation so probably i'm not aware of any tool uh, mm-hmm. which is built on top of rpa wing so maybe i'll uh-huh. go through and try to understand rpa but um, for any automation tool right uh, it could be anything like you take like simple automation tool so they need to define some a process they need to define the process how it needs to be automated right let's say yeah um we have a regular job of like um, getting a groceries from the store right okay you need to do few things before going there right i mean you need to yeah. get started uh by collecting the keys uh, to drive the car there right so collect the keys get the license uh, get out of the home start the car and go on the road and go to the store and before that itself we need to know which store you want to go and what to buy right after going there you have to buy and then come back okay now in this process so many things can be changed okay now i took an example of car here you can go on a bike also to the grocery store and then get it right so once you identify this element and depict in a, a format of process and uh, that can be uh, automated by changing this elements at any point of time so that is called process in here part of okay. the robotic process automation as well probably they might be using some process engine which we are not aware of it we need to know okay. really what they are doing okay okay mm-hmm. or what tool they are using to automate it but this is not the same as the automation tool what we do for any programming language right let's say i have created one web application here and i want to test how this works right so you can still very well you know follow some language like maybe selenium or like some um any automatic um job spark there so many languages which you can automate uh, your web application or how it is behaving or like what are the whether your business cases are running properly or not okay mm-hmm. so even for that you can use this b payment so there is nothing hard stop whether way to use way not to use this okay okay so, so if you have yeah. created so okay. if i understand um see whenever you have a user tasks right so that's where probably these robots or robotic process comes into picture instead of doing a user manual tasks um being in approving or or do some validation all those things so robots can do it and then move into the next next phase of the or stage in the process Work so if robot is doing that is still automatic only it is automatic yeah. doing it right that means you are adding some intelligence to the task saying that hey even the uh, process reaches here to this task okay check for mm-hmm. these conditions okay and check the behavior what is it and act accordingly that is robotic process that means you added some intelligence there okay and provided some uh, uh, um what we can say some group of instructions to it right mm-hmm. and uh, based on the status of that uh, task and it pick that respective instruction and then act on it that is still completely automated right so okay. uh, uh, the manual task is where you cannot achieve those with the um, automated way i mean in this maybe if you take like one of the example as approval right approval mm-hmm. approval process can be done through a robotic process as well but uh, uh, you need to provide that intelligence of like okay evaluating what has been done till now right like let's take the same example of invoice approval right so manually if i have to approve i need to check what has been done as part of that invoice what we ordered whether they have been delivered properly what is the stock number whether I mean, whatever is there in the invoice right i will verify manually and then approve it okay if you want to automate that you build that intelligence how to evaluate that invoice whether that invoice is correct or not and then 
associate the task to the uh, robotic task. Robot. Okay. 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 And now whatever you are doing, it is being automated, and it is doing the same job what you are doing. Okay. It is evaluating that invoice report, going through each and every step to make sure whatever is being generated as part of that invoice is correct or not. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you need to, yeah, exactly look at the task, whether it can be completely automated or not, and then provide that instructions and then completely automate it. And some things cannot be automated completely. Where it needs some manual intervention. Intervention. Example, okay, let's say the Cisco switch when we are upgrading to OS, right? So there was a power failure and then switch was in the middle of the uh, OS installation and got stuck and power came back and now we are unable to install it the OS okay so you, I mean you can add so many automated uh, tasks or like robotic uh, program to go connect to the device but let's let's assume that the port itself is disconnected and you are not even consoled to that switch mm -hmm. and there is no way the automated process, whatever you build, can proceed further, right? So somebody has yeah. to manually go there and then log into the switch and then see what happened there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those things we can depict them as manual tasks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fine. Okay. So apart from my blind dumb questions, so uh, if any others have question specific to this BPMN process or Kamunda or give us a feedback um, so that I can plan uh, with Shankar for the next session. Hi Shankar, this is Ajay. Hey Ajay. Yeah, actually I work on SAP Hybris. We will also having a similar kind of uh, business process model, but uh, it's already embedded in our uh, framework. It's based on a Spring framework. I thought similar kind of, but uh, you are common like this common is a, like an independent one, right? Where yeah. we can run. Yeah, but uh, our framework internally consists of business framework. Like we will give what uh, next step, like if this action executes based on the output to which action it has to go. So we'll define XMLs in our uh, business process and uh, the process one continues like uh, our season e-commerce product actually. So whenever you are placed an order, if order has been placed successfully, then go to next step. Else, uh, re uh, revert the payment like that. We as we used to define. Internally. So I thought of similar kind of thing only, but uh, now like it's an in completely independent, right? Without any like, uh, it's an independent. And we can not run. Yeah, it's not a platform agnostic. It's a platform agnostic, so it can be deployed yes. platform. Right? So earlier yeah. we got that question as well, whether ERP has any processing hmm. in it or not. Yes, yes. We, so definitely it would have it because there are some standard hmm. set of process it, it is following across the industry. They have embedded all of them inside the ERP and then provided as a common tool for everyone to use it. But with the Kamunda, you can define your own process explicitly and then deploy it as part of your application internally. Yeah. Thank you. That is cool. Thank you. It was an interesting topic as well. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rikant. Uh, probably, uh, if not, message me. Um, I think either from me or some someone forward to you or in the group. If you, either you can mention me what is your feedback or are you expecting the following following session or not and if you in, if you are interested to learn or or to see uh, any new technologies or if you would like to have a session on that particular technologies let me know i'll find out within techride or within my contacts or within contacts from techride's contacts i'll see if i can facilitate something so because we wanted to continue this um weekend sessions um uh, every week at least one or two sessions so let's let's see how best we can facilitate and see share our knowledge and experiences okay.